And a big part of it is you better get off your butt and be a man. Don't be such a sissy. Well, the born again barbarian, he is dropping some gems on how to keep the woman happy and how to keep the marriage fulfilling and on track. Now, if you're liking this content, like, subscribe, and give me a comment below. This guy, man, if he can get 75,000 subscribers dropping this kind of advice, I should be able to get a couple more, I hope. All right, anyway, let's get to it. Number three, uh, marriage problems. No intimacy, okay? Whoa, oh man, born again barbarian. Whoa, man, marriage problems, no intimacy. All right, let's see. This guy, from the way he looks, looks like he's good at intimacy here. I'm being sarcastic. All right, here we go. Oh, man, I don't remember last time my wife and I were together, and you know, just, we're just completely just dead in the water. It's just cold relationship and whatever. Okay, um, are you staying in good shape? Are you staying attracted to her? I have to ask myself that question. <laughs> you gotta ask yourself that question. I'm looking, I'm looking at him. I'm like, I wonder how often you're asking yourself that question, man. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I gotta ask. Like, are you staying in good shape, my friend? You don't look like you're staying in good shape. I mean, not the dog on the guy, but. When I think about a specimen of health and, and somebody that's in good shape, it looks like a middle-aged man. A guy that looks like the the born-again barbarian, he wouldn't come to mind here, all right? <laughs> he's, he's slapping around all his followers, his 74,000 subscribers he's got, slapping them around, <laughs> around saying, are you staying in good shape? Dude, you're not even trimming your beard. Well, alone staying in good shape. I mean, that only takes five minutes. Trim that beard up a little bit. You're talking about staying in good shape. All right, here we go. Yeah. I shouldn't dog on him too much. I'm sure he's trying. Am I in good shape? Am I staying attractive to my wife? You know, a big reason I have a long beard is because my wife likes the long beard. A lot of people, brother, when are you going to shave your beard? It looks really uncomfortable. Whatever. She likes it that way. So, sorry. She wins, you lose. Um, How about her? No, I like <laughs> what she loves talking to this wife. I love talking to this wife. It just... I would, I would, I have never met a woman that likes a beard like that, that just looks this scruffy looking, just nonsense, hasn't been trimmed probably for three years or something. Like, I, I've never met a woman that likes a beard. Now, some women do like beards, but, but normally the beards they like, they're trimmed and they're soft, you know, and they're, 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 they're kept well. So you don't look like a barbarian, you know? And that's guy. Oh my goodness. I don't know. All right. I don't want to dog on his looks too much, but I just like, man, this guy, come on, man. Uh, porn. Are you a porn viewer? Those struggles with porn and whatever else. How do you think that makes your wife feel? Sissy. You little pervert. I speak from experience. Um, thankfully, I got victory over pornography, my uh, extreme addiction to it before I ever met my wife. So I had victory over that sin. Praise the Lord. But uh, there's a lot of men that they just keep it right on into the marriage. You know, and they're looking at airbrushed, you know, whores and things that, you know, they, they take away any kind of whatever, uh, blemishes on the woman's skin or whatever else. Now you have artificial intelligence porn, so, you know, you're really an idiot if you're falling for that. They don't even exist. But you're going to have a good relationship with your wife while looking at porn. Get straightened out. Hey, I, I agree with him on that, you know, get rid of the porn. But then he says, like, yeah, yeah, I was addicted to porn, too, or something. Well, okay. Like, it. <laughs> It seems like the guy just wants to name all of his faults and then slap everybody else around for the faults that he has or has had and probably still has or whatever. Anyway, yeah, like, hey, are you staying in good shape? Are you staying attracted to your woman? I don't know. I'm sure this guy, he's, you know, he's a good guy. I'm sure he's a good guy. But I don't know on a scale of one to ten if if any women, if any woman would rank him above like a two or something. And he's railing on these guys about staying attractive to your woman. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. You better. Marriage problem number four, no respect. Um, my wife just doesn't respect me. Well, why is the reason for that? You see, you blame yourself. This isn't about self-pity. This isn't about, well, I guess I'm just no good. I guess she's just, you know, she deserves something better than me. I guess we should just get to No, don't pity yourself. Better yourself. All right? You come out here, uh, when I used to learn how to log and things, you should have seen some of my first trees. The the face cut and the and the back cut, you know, coming in and it'd be way off, crooked, going this way, and you know, the trees going completely wrong and falling over and smashing another tree and things. It took a while. A lot of pain, a lot of blood, a lot of sweat. 
until I learned to actually fell trees correctly. Trial and error, you see? And you know something? Your marriage will be the same way. Trial and error. You're going to have some mistakes. You're going to make some errors. You have to get through that. Have you earned her respect? Are you a man? Does she view you as a man? Or do you still act like a little boy? Number five, are you imparting... Yeah, I don't agree with that either. Respect is earned in a way, but... You know, in the modern day, women do not respect men just in general. They do not. Even respectable men. I know a lot of guys, they are respectable men. They do the right thing. They're not perfect, but they're good men. They do the right thing, and they do not have the respect of their women because women are taught you don't respect men. That's, that is 2024. That is our culture. That is where we are. And so to slap around me, ah, well, you respect it, blah, 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 blah. Ah, man, I don't know. I think I could shoot holes just by looking at you, my friend. I could shoot holes in respectable, like, um, okay, oh, let's move on. Wisdom to her. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I think verse 34, around there, the women are supposed to be silent in the churches. Verse 35 goes on to say, if she will learn anything, let her ask her husband at home. Not call your pastor and ask his opinion on certain things. You're supposed to be a man of God that understands the scriptures. And if she has a question for you and you can't answer it, you better find the answer. Be a spiritual head. Remember, she's supposed to reverence you as unto Christ. If you want respect from her, then you better earn it. Don't worry about her problems, brother. You take care of your own. Wait a minute. Now, she's she's commanded to respect and reverence you. Now, that doesn't matter if you earn it or not. Now, we got to be careful with that. That's bad doctrine. That's bad doctrine. That's like saying... Well, you're commanded to love your wife, but she better earn that. She better. Now, what pastor would say that? None. There, there's no pastor ever that would say that, right? So we got to be careful in the way that we like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is hard for a woman, harder for a woman to reverence and respect her husband if he's a ding dong. But, <laughs> but still, that is her command if she is... If she is a spirit-filled Christian woman, she will do that. Number six, are you protecting her? Abraham's failure, I believe, led to Sarah's sin. Back in the Old Testament. Here comes Pharaoh and his armies. And they come over and they see Sarah and she's a beautiful woman. And they say, you know, who's this? Oh, her? Um, she's, she's my sister. Don't touch me. Don't hurt me. Oh. All have sinned. All come short of the glory of God. I have my issues and whatever. Abraham is better than me and other issues. But I would never do that. I don't care how bad things. So scripture never says that Sarah sinned in that. Uh, I don't I don't believe that's correct, my friend. This guy sent some huge army of Islamic terrorists or something like that. I'm going to fight, you know, and defend my wife to the death. They're not going to take my wife. No, no, sir. I don't care how bad it gets. I've already defended my wife on different occasions. Um, you know, any man. Yeah, it's all big talk until the uh, Muslim army shows up. I'm pretty sure he's, oh, I've already defended my wife. Yeah. Against a Muslim army? No, you haven't, my friend. It's all good and well until a bunch of huge dudes show up, you know? Like, okay. I go out in public. I see any man looking at my wife, Googling her, I like to say, you know, doing the looking up and down at her. And I would just stop what I'm doing and I would just go. And it's always been enough. I'm a big guy. But, you know, I just stare at them. Yeah, I can tell you're a big guy. And they're always looking at her, and they look over at me, and they go, like that, and they look down. Go ahead and say something. It's my wife. Stop looking at her. I'm a wild man when it comes to that. Yeah, I would venture, no, I don't want a dog on this guy or his wife, but I would venture to say a guy that looks like this, I doubt he's got a woman at home that's a beauty queen, you know? Well, maybe she's a nice woman. I'm sure she's a nice woman. But I doubt he's got a Melania Trump at home. That guys are just everywhere he goes, they're just oogling his wife, blah, blah, blah. I mean, is this hyperbole? This guy's not like, I, I don't know. Like, no, nah, I don't want a dog on the guy's wife. I'm just like, what well, this this seems a little bit suspicious to me when this guy's droning on about this. Come on, man. How how many times has this actually happened? I mean, come on. I got a good looking wife, and I don't think I've ever seen some guy oogling my wife. Whoa, look at, you know, I mean, come on. Like, give me that, brother. I'll tell you what, right now. There's some things I need help with. There's other things that I'm, the Lord's given me a, a, you know, abilities in. Don't mess with my wife. That goes very bad for you. 
Okay. Um, I will protect her. Again, tell the story. If you haven't heard it, right over there, four o'clock in the morning the one time, and they're laying in bed, and I get, I, I hear something. I look out the window toward my feet. I see headlights coming back. Couldn't, they weren't coming behind me because we don't have a window back that way to the north in our bedroom. And, but I saw the headlights. I was in my underwear. Okay, so at least he has a window in this box that he lives in. No electricity, no running water, but at least there's a window so he can see lights that come up. All right, that's good. That's good. All right. Hey, I sleep. I, get, I have to be cool when I'm sleeping or else I don't sleep. I jumped up, underwear, no shoes, no socks, pants, shirt, anything, ran, grabbed a 762 by 51 battle rifle and uh, chambered around and ran out onto the porch zero degrees in the dead of winter and fired three rounds into the air and, and yelled, get off my property. They started driving back, and I went and leveled the rifle, and it was like this, and I would have filled them full of lead if they would have been shooting at me. Oh, we got the wrong lane and whatever else. I said, get off of my land right now. I said, wow, you sure are courageous. No, I love my wife. See? No, you sound like an idiot. He's... <laughs> you sound like an idiot. All right, let's go. I'm going to protect her. And I find it detestable to think of anybody messing with my wife, and I just kind of, oh, please, no, oh, please. Jesus wouldn't do that for his bride. I'm supposed to be like him. All right. So I, I guess this is the, the Christian thing to do. If somebody gets lost and they come, they come up the wrong driveway at night. I think that's what he said. Maybe it was in some other part. They come up the wrong driveway. You run out there, zero degree weather in your underwear, fire three shots in the air, and then you point the rifle right at them. Not not knowing if they're actually a threat to your house or not. That sounds like somebody that's off the rails insane, really, to me. And listen, I'm a gun owner. I've got a few. I'm not going to say how many. I'm not going to say what calibers. I've got a few. <clears throat> and I've had to load them up every once in a while when I thought there was a threat. But I'm not firing shots in the air and pointing it straight at somebody that I haven't even confirmed is a, th is a threat. Sounds like you're a psycho, my friend. Like, that's not masculinity. That's psychotic. <sighs> okay. Number seven, God can use her to show you where you must improve. I have seen that so many times. Oh, man. There have been times I've been ready to just burn my wife. Oh, she irritates me so bad sometimes. And, you know, I get so mad at her. I just, Lord, why should you say anything? It's just, oh. He's ready to, ready to choke his wife, I guess, or something. I don't know. Yeah. That's irritating. The Lord says, is she right? It doesn't matter if she's right or not. She's irritating me. The Lord says, is she right? Yeah, she's right. Then change. Boy. Get it fixed up. You see, if you really believe in the biblical marriage, then it's you first, man. Yeah, point that finger. Point that finger at it's you first. That's right. Listen to the voice of God through your wife. Hmm. Okay. As you first, husband. Don't you blame her for anything. You get it sorted out between you and God first. Go look in the mirror. God, if I'm wrong in this, if she's right, then you show it to me. Hey, you know what? She really disrespected me that time. But God, you know what? The reason she did that is because I was in the wrong. You get her and you say, hey, I need to talk to you. What? What is it? I just want to say something. You were right. I've had to go to my wife a number of times just say, can you pray for me? I'm struggling with this. I know you're right. She says to me, where in the Bible does it say, uh, gonna? I would like you to be a great preacher. I want you to do your very best, Brian. I want you to say, going to. It doesn't matter, whatever. She wants the best for me. She wants to reverence me. She wants to make me better. Please pray for me. I need help. Is that, I'm guessing this guy's a preacher then? He's a pastor? I, I, hopefully he's more than just like a YouTube preacher or something. Here, I don't know. I guess I'll have to look it up here. I'm not sure. The born-again barbarian, I'm not sure what all he's got going on, but all right. See, I'll tell you a little secret here. Uh, we've had some real bad times in our marriage. You know that? Whoa, shocker. A guy that talks like this and acts like this, can you believe he's had some real bad times in his marriage? Man, shocker of the year. Right. You want to know why? Because I wasn't much of a husband. Well, I'm shocked on that one, too. Okay. Because I was a sissy little boy. And God used that woman to correct me. And I had to examine myself and say, you know something? She's right. I better change.
Praise the Lord. Number eight, humble yourself and ask her to pray for you. Got ahead of myself there. Number nine, show interest in her. Don't be a tough guy, dude. Okay. Deliver your own child. Come on, man. Did you just say that? Did you really just say that? If you want to be a tough guy, deliver your own child. Come on. Oh, my gosh. All right. Hey, give me a comment below. Is anybody like saying, what, what on earth? What is going on here? I just, I watched this guy. And I'm like, how does this guy have 70, almost 75,000 people subscribed to him on YouTube? I'm like, who can listen to this? Well, there's some women, you know, they, they start to have complications. Okay, you know, go to a midwife. You know, you want to go to the hospital thing, whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. I understand. I'm not trying to put anybody down that went through that whole thing. Whatever. But what I'm saying is um, I delivered my own son. Well, that opened your eyes up to a new world. Uh, your little uh, pretty wife there and everything else. And how about it when uh, there's a baby coming out down there? And there's all the birthing fluids and all the blood and everything else, and you get your hands all through that and everything. It gives you a different perspective. You know, I realized something. I realized how tough my wife was when she went through that. I was tired. <laughs> I wasn't feeling that kind of pain. I know. It, you know, there is a lot of pain in childbirth, right? But it's only almost every woman throughout history that's done this. Right. This this isn't like, oh, my goodness, you, you have a woman that's done this, blah, blah. Yeah, her and every other woman. That was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. A wonderful experience. Or decided that one was enough for us. And uh, that's the way it is. We've never used any kind of birth control or anything else. Just to be very blunt about it. Um, for whatever reason, God just said, okay, one's all you get. I don't know why or whatever else, but that's it. Okay, then I'll be thankful for what I have. Thankful for what he did for me and that bonding experience. And my wife, she said, she dreamed. She always thought, I want to have a child someday, and I want to have my child at home. Her father was actually born at home. And she said, that's my dream. I want to be able to marry a man that's strong enough, that has enough character, that he'll deliver the baby. Joseph did it with Mary. God manifested in the flesh, and he said, oh, I'll take care of it. I don't need a midwife. I'll take care of it. Makes you a man. Real quick. Study natural free birthing. We have a video on it. Okay? There's a lot of other videos out there. And, uh, oh, it's her. So... It it makes you a man now. Not only do you have to have a wife to be a man, but now it makes you a man to deliver your wife's baby, your baby, I guess, to deliver your baby. Okay. I, I didn't realize that's that makes you a man as well. All right. Now, I've been there. I have five children. I've been there for all five of the birth, uh, the first one I helped, you know, bring the, our baby girl out, right? Things like that. And they didn't used to let you do that. But back in the old days, I, like when my dad was there, they didn't even let the father in the OR room or whatever. But now, now you can help and it's there. And, and it's a pretty, yeah, it is a pretty awesome experience. Let's say it is pretty awesome. But anyway, I wouldn't say that made me a man. No, that was <laughs> and and I can grow a beard like this guy too, but I choose to shave. <clears throat> and does that make me less of a man? I, maybe it does. I don't know. Anyway. Her uh, time of the month or whatever else. Okay, get involved, honey. What can I get you? Ew, yuck! Ew, there's blood there. Ew. Uh, Sissy, I this guy is ridiculous. <laughs> Let's, come on, man. Come on. Oh, if it's your time of the month, you got to get her something. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't want to see blood. Yeah. I, do you want to see menstru menstrual blood? No, I don't. Really, I don't. Okay. Like, I don't know if that makes you a sissy. Some things are just gross, my friend. I don't know what else. Oh, my goodness. What? Who lit? I don't know how this guy has 75,000 subscribers. Like, I guess, oh my goodness, all right. I don't, I remember some idiot the one time wrote a comment, he said, he said about, uh, I was ripping on the thing of women wearing makeup and things. Makeup's toxic, poisonous, okay? Uh, classically speaking, and in the scriptures, women that wore makeup were prostitutes, okay? You shouldn't need to see your wife in makeup, okay? You're not always gonna be able to see her in makeup. And this guy said about- Oh, no kidding, you're not always gonna see your wife in makeup. Okay, yeah, shocker, all right. I remember some idiot in the comments and he wrote and he said, I'm glad that my wife wears makeup because I saw her once without it and it was she was really you know not very attractive or something. <laughs> yeah, that guy probably was an idiot. All right, I agree with you. I agree with you, born again barbarian. That was a stupid comment. I agree. All right. Poor thing, you. Yeah. If you can't if you can look at your wife without makeup on and you know not see her beauty, well, 
that's a problem. Um, and finally, number 10, uh, Jesus Christ. Or, or maybe your wife's just really not that beautiful. I mean, that could be, right? I mean, there, there are objective beauty standards. There really are. I don't know if you could believe that or not, but there, there are women that are objectively beautiful, and there are women who are objectively ugly. That's just called the facts of life. <laughs> now, I'm being a little hard on this guy because I, I watched this or I listened to this video and I just thought, this guy, he just really rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, he really graded on me. I was like, who, what poor young men are listening to this nonsense this guy is talking about? Like, I mean, this was 80% nonsense. I'll give him 20%. 20% was all right. 80% just complete nonsense. And it really rubbed me the wrong way. I thought, man, any poor guy that's listening to this and thinks this guy really knows what he's talking about, I just, I feel bad for him. I mean, we got to get this nonsense just corrected. And I'm glad we are getting it corrected. I'm glad. I mean, this guy's got 75,000 subscribers. I'm not sure how, but he does. But I, man, listen to this kind of stuff. Hopefully his other videos are better than this because this is awful. And we got to get it turned around. And we are getting it turned around because Christ is winning. He is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is Post Millennial Man.